Okay, what I am here uh, on this course for is to learn about communication skills. And all of us know that the best way to learn anything is to teach it. So this is the first time that computer science department is taking part in this kind of uh, an experiment, if you like, where previously communication skills used to be taught to about 700 people in the convocation hall. And it was taught for about half a semester. And as you can imagine, it didn't work out very well. It was not interactive. Communication is about communicating, right? And unless you communicate, how do you know whether you've learned anything? And how do you learn anything? Like those of you, I've seen a good number here who've taken the embedded systems course. Unless you actually programmed the machines, you've not really learned anything. So in the communication skills course, unless you've tried to communicate and been criticized by friends and colleagues and stuff like that, you don't really know where you are. Okay. So the way the uh, faculty here have managed uh, to sort this problem out is by having one hour where they give you their gyan in the HSS uh, 699, uh, uh, the faculty, uh, Viren Sethi, uh, Parthasarthi and everybody. And the other remaining two hours with your department is meant for us to do a tutorial means more interactivity because the class size is smaller. I don't see how much smaller it is, but more, inter more interactivity and uh, assignments and exercises and all that we can do here. Um, for the, the, the PPNP requirement of the course, I think we'll go ahead with the same thing for now, which is 80% attendance, right? If you're here, that means kind of uh, you're on the job. So we'll take attendance every week. Now, what I wanted to ask is that would you prefer to come as it is at the moment for two one hour slots in the morning or would you prefer to come for one two hour slot say on a Thursday between five and seven? Huh? So, so uh, how many people here uh, will not be able to come to that two hour slot on a Thursday? Will not be able to come? Okay, hands up. How many, how many? A good number, right? Any more? How many for whom that five to seven slot on a Thursday is not convenient? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 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 ten. 15% of the class, right? What do you have that time out of interest? Okay. Anybody else? Yeah. A seminar meeting. Any others? Okay. Embedded systems. What time? 5 to 6.30, is it? Okay. Anybody else? Seminar meeting. So then it makes sense uh, to continue uh, with this slot, but what we might do is we might choose to uh, divide the class up or whatever. We'll decide at the end of this week as to how best to do it. Yeah, how about Wednesday evening actually? Five to seven on a Wednesday evening. Okay, how many cannot do Wednesday evening? How many cannot do Tuesday evening? Okay, so you're stuck with this uh, uh, slot. We'll continue here for now. And, and uh, the only reason is that if we plan to have outside speakers, right? This morning slot is a bit, in, is a bit inconvenient. So on occasion, we might shift it, especially if we have outsiders speaking to us on say the Thursday evening slot, five uh, to seven, right? If we have outside speakers, right? Because this morning slot might not be very practical for some people. Anyway, we'll uh, take it from there. So the way, okay, we are given certain amount of flexibility in how, how we want to uh, play this part of the course. We have the choice of having our totally different parallel program to what HSS guys are doing, or we can, uh, 
actually we are advised to just uh, keep about 80% of the 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 cost the same and have 20% variations and all that right so what i'm planning to do today and in the next session on thursday is to individually ask each of you to tell us what you expect from this course individually <coughs> right that's if you like our requirements uh, specification so anyway so we've uh, almost resolved uh, these issues here okay and this is a tutorial as i said we have a certain amount of flexibility what do we do what do we plan to do with this flexibility that we have right there are some very important skills which are not being covered which we feel are very important and especially for computer science uh, people is uh, things like visual communication right graphical and visual communication because a lot of what we are doing is manifesting itself through a computer screen through various means like that to know how to use visual communication how to use graphics how how to use fonts how to use a color for instance how not to use right people don't realize that there's a very very uh, strong grammar and semantics of how to use color using the wrong color for a particular application can be a fatal thing right and we also want to talk about things like uh, social networks right uh, social networking and things like that the etiquette and how to use the social networking like facebook twitter and all these kind of things we want to talk a bit more about unconventional uh, communication uh, skills we'll come down to that we want to cover things that you might not have thought of right like body language and stuff like that i'll come to that there's a very interesting uh, ted talk on body language by one lady called amy i can't remember her last name but it's very interesting what she says she says that when you are in a position of dominance what do you do typically how do you manifest dominance in say a relationship or in in an interaction and stuff like that uh, can you give me some ideas what is a body language he seen the ted talk you seen it right very effective so he says that dominance is normally expressed by spreading yourself out in the animal kingdom right animals when they want to threaten you or ward you off what do they do they they expand themselves either they expand their body or they expand the space which they cover right a snake will spread its hood tiger already the the lion already has its mane right or some animals come out like that birds also put up their wings and put a big show of of size right and uh, what happens when someone is showing submission not you <laughs> when you want to show bicharanas i submit what do you do you contract you do this you do this you do this right you f you cross your legs fold your arms that's a very defensive kind of person, right don't attack me kind of thing what does the dog do it goes on his back and exposes its uh, vulnerable uh, parts right and the interesting thesis there is that if you adopt a dominant kind of uh, posture you start thinking in a dominant way also right so these are small small things which are 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 very relevant to us in fact uh, communication is about uh, so what we are going to cover on much of the course especially the hss part is quite rightly technical communication right report writing note taking uh, english how to manage your language and, and stuff like that we shall all we shall also have that on this course right but we'll try and inspire it from real life examples outside and stuff that you are doing like for instance we hope for instance to have you go away so i'll be giving you homework right we don't want to use the class in a lecture mode i don't want to stand up here and lecture to you guys because that has no sense right you have to learn communication by actually exercising it so this will be interactive and what we'll be doing is giving you some work to do offline as homework you come prepared to class and what we'll do is that in the class we'll reserve it for discussions right so what we might do is we might split the class up into two parts and take them as a smaller batch depending on the requirements of uh, uh, 
the topic that we are teaching. There are roughly about 101 people in this class, or 105, I don't know. Uh, we'll split you up into two groups, and according to that, we'll, uh, we'll uh, proceed, right? So before we start, so what we're going to do incidentally uh, today, uh, I'll come to that. Can anybody cite here incidentally some instances that they have experienced of really good communication in any kind of context? Some really impressive instances of communication in any context. Any volunteers? Just some stories, some instances and stuff like that. Oh, really effective, it can be a teacher, it can be a manager, it can be an employee, it can be a parent, a relative, where you've seen a very effective instance of communication. It can be a paper that you've read, it can be an article, it can be a book. Any volunteers? Yeah. The last time we did a class, uh, a cloud computing. Okay. So that was communication skills where he's saying that actually the communication skill, there was a listening skill. How to listen, right? Actually, a lot of communication is about how to listen. People don't realize that. People say that communication means I should talk and impose and effect and, you know, communication is often, often a situation requires that you just listen intelligently and listening is also a very difficult art, right? how to listen, often you will also find that if you have a problem, right, just explaining that problem to somebody else helps you solve that problem. So what has happened in the process? You are communicating not only with yourself in this process, but with somebody else. In trying to articulate your problem, you have actually solved the problem. This is very important insight. In trying to articulate a problem, you have solved it. I was going through a maths uh, problem with my uh, daughter yesterday, right? She had a very simple uh, problem, but which made you think. There's a little uh, cistern, there's a, there, there are two pipes, and uh, one pipe will fill the cistern in 24 minutes, and the other pipe will fill it in 32 minutes. You've done this uh, problem before, right? And uh, um, the question is, in how much time should I turn the first uh, yeah, I want to turn the uh, first pipe off in 16 minutes. How much time will it take to fill the cistern? Right? So, actually, it made me think a little bit. <laughs> Not done these things for a long time. And I realized that most of the problem here, right, most of the problem in this was actually articulating the problem as a formula. In communicating to yourself, what the problem is in identifying the problem. Once you've identified it, then you number crunch, you do some manipulation and you got the answer. Mm -hmm. So a lot of our lives as engineers and people out there is spent in communication, communicating with ourselves firstly, communicating with other people, communicating with groups, trying to sort of understand interpersonal dynamics and making things happen. Right? Typically, Professor Fatak, when we used to be the school of IT, used to exhort each student in our uh, department that, look, your job is to go out there and become leaders, either technology leaders or business leaders or what have you. You guys should be leaders when you get out. And at the end of your MTech, you should have at least a patent or a paper in a good quality uh, publication. That's the least that we demand of you, right? And we are hoping that you guys will go out there and become leaders. And ideally start companies, not go and work for anybody if possible, right? So we are expecting most of you, see all of you are technically bright and you'll go out and be technical, but we don't want you to go out and become technicians, you know. 
glorified technicians. You sit in a corner and a number crunch or write a program and stuff like that. You guys have the capability if you come so far to do much, much more. And that much, much more that you will do is prefaced by the quality of communication skills that you acquire or that you identify or that you cultivate. Right? Often an entire deal can be made or broken just on the way you've communicated. Many years ago, right, I'll give my own example. I went to Cambridge for an interview. I was quite young that time and a bit brash. And uh, there was one, one aircraft which had flown at that time it called the Gossamer Condor. It was a, uh, a pedal powered aircraft. This is many, many 30 years ago or more. And uh, in the interview, I was asked, uh, um, I, 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 I told the interviewer, a very crusty old English gentleman, you know, must be having his biases and all that, that uh, you must have heard about the Gossamer, you might have heard about this aircraft which has just flown, right? And that's it. I failed at that point. I didn't get through in that, uh, in that interview. I said, you might have known. Now, this was a nervous student, you know, just trying to sort of share an idea by saying, you might have known, it's indicating that perhaps he didn't know, right? Perhaps he didn't know and he got very irritated. And then I could see that he just clammed up. I could see it in his face that he clammed up and I've lost it, right? You are trying to convince somebody in an interview to take you on in this job, right? What is the body language that you should have? There'll be other guys, 100 guys, equally bright as you. How will you ensure that you get the job? You're trying to convince a guy to close on a deal, on a business deal or an intellectual property agreement, some kind of agreement, right? What are the kind of skills that you need to bring to bear in your body language, in your, the language that you use to interact with them, or in your emails to them before you have the meeting, right? So I'm hoping that we'll be able to touch upon the importance of communication in many, many different contexts. And I want to also be driven by you guys, right? You should tell us also as to what you want out of this course. So the way we plan to do it, I'll tell you right now, okay? So amongst the guest speakers, we have a friend called Sudarshan Dheer, who's a very, very distinguished uh, graphic designer, right? If we have time, we'll bring him on. And uh, have you seen the Hindustan Petroleum logo? Have you seen the UTI logo by Unitrust India? Many, many important logos like that are designed by him. And for him, designing a logo is a major, major task. He says logo is like a mantra. Right? When you see a logo, it elicits emotion inside you. So whatever that company stands for is captured inside that logo. And that is a very powerful form of communication. It's like the mantra. It's like a beige mantra, he said. You know? So he gives a lot of importance to corporate image, the visual language of the logo, the colors that you use, the way you kind of design it and stuff like that. So it will be useful for you to speak to people like this to see how differently people think, to sensitize you to visual communication. Samir uh, Sasrabuddha, a colleague here, will also take a module here on visual communication using graphics and videos. We want you to make a small video, which we'll look at at the end of the, the course, right? He will teach you the language of how to make a video and how to use uh, uh, graphics like fonts, colors, things like that in your, your uh, presentations. Like for instance, there are people who make a PowerPoint uh, presentation which is full of so much noise, visual noise, colors, designs, this, that and the other, that the message that you want to put there gets lost in the process. Right? You guys need to be told about this. How to present, how not to present, what kind of language to use, how to even dress. Many people don't realize you can't go to an interview in Chappal and Bushart, you know, right? You can if you want to create a certain impression in some places that might work, right? But not in all places. And plus trying to overdo yourself by having boot, tie, you know, suit and look, you know, artificially over smart and all that, that might also not be right if you go uh, uh, to an interview with say Google or something like that, Right? Because what is a company looking for? It's looking for guys who are mavericks, who are very bright, good programmers, this, that, and the other. It's not looking for a totally conventional guy, you know, who will just do what he's told. Right? That's also communication, the way you dress, the way you carry yourself. Okay. So what are the skills? So a few of the skills, right, 
are there in your uh, HSS uh, 699 uh, course program, the note taking, report writing, uh, English and uh, so on, uh, letter writing, how to write a scientific paper, how to uh, prepare a presentation and so on. We will also go into things like visual communication, graphics, how to use color, fonts and all that kind of things. We will also try and address some uh, scenarios, right? how to prepare for an interview, how to sell an idea, whether it is to your guide, to your colleagues or to a venture capitalist and things like that, how to talk to a stranger, right? how to negotiate. There is a very interesting course I went to when I was in industry uh, on just selling, how to sell. And then I realized that that applies to everything in life because you are constantly trying to sell something, either whether it is a course, whether it is an idea to a seminar student or a, a M.Tech student or whatever it is, trying to convince them that this is the right way to go. How do you convince? You don't say that, do this. There will be a resistance, right? A good way to be, to find out what the person wants to do and see if there can be a marriage between what the, uh, the person wants to do and what you want them to do, right? That's also an instance of communication. Okay, so we'll go into uh, into bits of that. Other skills, how to complain, right? This seems like a very superficial or silly thing, but it's not. How to complain? See, always remember that you have this attitude. You can see only what you want, right? How can he not understand? He's so unreasonable. But don't you realize that everybody is reasonable? Right? He feels he's absolutely reasonable. Right? But he sees things totally in a different way from his perspective and you think you are absolutely reasonable and you refuse to see each other's point of view and there is a conflict there. Right? So why don't you presume that everybody has a reasonable point of view and then come to some agreement. Right? Things like this. How to request something? You know, If you request something in the wrong way, you don't get it. One master of this is my daughter from the very, very young age. Right? I've learned this very, very formidable negotiation skill. I've still to win with her. Like for instance, Papa, ye chahiye. Aje, nahi milega. Achha, ye nahi milega. To kya milega? Ye milega. <laughs> right? Aye, nahi milega. Ye milega. <laughs> right? Achha, nahi. Kyu nahi? Aaj nahi milega. Achha, to kab milega? <laughs> right? So she pins you down that at this point you're not going to give it, but at some future point, a weaker assertion, you kind of get, get uh, manipulated into giving that kind of thing, manipulated or negotiated. So now I've realized that, 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 that you can't win at negotiation, you got to say this is it and not argue about it, <laughs> otherwise you get, so negotiation is a very important skill. Like for instance, if you're trying to sell somebody an idea, right, one way to do it is, hey, this is the idea, take it or leave it. Now, if it's very important to you and he says, I leave it, then you've lost. What do I do now? Where do I go? There's nobody else I can go to and so on, right? So how do you convince? So you'll say, okay, you don't want to do this. Why? Get behind the person's reasons because they might have a very reasonable uh, point of view as to why they don't want to do it. And then bring them to your point of view as to, and then come to some kind of a compromise. Right? That's what selling is about, negotiation is about, and all these kind of things. Okay? Verbal and non-verbal communication, diction and delivery, sensitivity to language, all these things will come out, poise and body language, speech and drama. Right? Often I get a student who wants to do something and they come with some ideas, they're very bright and I know that. And he's got the answers and I know that. But the way he talks to me kind of is totally confused. In fact, one of the most important skills that you guys learn in your seminar and your report writing and so on is how to articulate your ideas, how to be a bit more confident. And I often wonder, hey, if this guy was just a bit more loud and confident and believed in himself a bit more, he'd go so much more far, you know. But this has to come from within and it has to be pointed out to you and public speaking. So that will also happen as we go along. And the lost manual of communication skills. This is a, a, a former student of ours who's left us now, Akshar, his name is. 
and we were discussing the communication skills course and he came up with all sorts of ideas and uh, so we discussed that should we put this into the course and stuff like that. How to say no, right? You come up with this uh, situation many times, you've done some, some homework and your friend wants to copy, now it's a very nice idea and you don't want to share it, how do you say no, right? Or someone wants to make you do something that you really don't want to do, how do you say no? It's very difficult, okay? How to understand people and how to understand yourself. So we have a few guest lecturers in this thing. Uh, uh, one is, uh, they coincidentally have the name uh, Prakash. So we have uh, Prakash Vaidya here, who is with Professor Fatak. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll uh, cover with him skills that I want to learn. How to proofread. Proofread has its own language, understanding language, understanding English and how to proofread a document. So we'll go through that. Like for instance, you'll go away and see a TED talk as homework. You'll make a summary of what you saw in the TED talk and then we start correcting your script and show you the language with which you can indicate the corrections in your script. At my age still, I've not learnt it. It's a very important skill. Like I've never learned to type and I've never learned this, but, but I also recognize it's a very important skill to have. You should learn it. Like if someone gives you a document, tomorrow you guys are, are going to be managers, right? Lots of documents are going to come to you. So you'll want to correct them and give them back. So there's actually a language for correction. How many of, the, uh, how many of you know this, the proofreading uh, language? One or two. So it'll be a, a good exercise. How to manage people, right? It'll come out in this thing. How to exercise authority and how not to exercise authority. Right? So if you read uh, Confucius and all these guys, the good king leads from behind. Right? What does that mean? You don't lead people, you don't manage them by saying do this and do that. Right? You lead them by understanding who they are, what they want out of life and guiding them towards that direction basically which also suits the group. How to deal with the plagiarism? So there's a big dose of ethics on this. Uh, typically, unfortunately, our educational system is such, the pressures are so high, cut paste has become like a kind of uh, standard mantra everywhere, right? Anytime I see a student's report where the language is very good, my heart sinks, right? It's come to that, okay? Because I know that there's some uh, gadbad here. <laughs> if I see something, it doesn't mean that you go and put <laughs> errors in your <laughs> thing to kind of uh, disorient. Uh, your guide, but just remember this, this is a good opportunity where without fear of failure, you can try an alternative way to being. Honesty and earnestness is something whose value is absolutely, you know, um, underestimated in this country, right? Because most of the time we are actually users of other people's IP. Most of the time we are users of other people's intellectual property. We don't have a culture here of creating intellectual property ourselves, unfortunately. Because there's not enough new products being developed in this country, there's not enough new software, that's changing very fast, right? But what one thing that you find abroad where a lot of new products and services are being uh, created is a very, very strong emphasis on intellectual uh, property and the protection of it. That's why at IIT we have a very, very strong movement on open source software, open source everything basically. Don't use MATLAB, use Scilab, use LibreOffice wherever you can, use Linux wherever you can. Because once you go out into industry, these softwares cost a hell of a lot of money, right? We can save a lot of money in this country in foreign exchange by having open source uh, software. So that's a big, big mantra here. How to deal with requests for unfair help? Like say you're on a course and your friend is a TA and kind of, you know, you want to make things easier. Life is so difficult. Right? Can't I just ask him for some help and this and that. But in the process what happens, you know, you don't learn. And you're here to learn. And copying and kind of, you know, getting help kind of robs you of the opportunity of struggle. And that struggle is where the learning actually happens. Right? Anytime you've taken a shortcut, you actually lose out. You're the loser. So this is a gr great gymnasium here to build up your strength. And it's like going to a gym and getting some other guy to do your exercise, you know. Right? This is the place to make your mistakes, to, you know, flex your intellectual muscles and get things done and struggle. 
right? That's where everything comes from. How do you <laughs> ensure a freeloader? You're in a group of five people and you're doing all the work and these guys are not doing anything. He goes off, he doesn't even come, come towards the end of the class, signs and goes off or <laughs> whatever it is, right? How do you ensure that uh, they get their due? How to maintain trust in a group, okay? How to build long-lasting relationships. This is what Akshar had uh, come up with last time. Other issues, how to deal with failures, right? So these will be side effects, hopefully, of the things that we do here. How to get rid of guilt or regret about things that went wrong and can't be fixed now, right? These are all elements. Okay, why am I going into this? This is a communication skills course. The reason is because this is the only place, perhaps, in your uh, curriculum where we can tackle out-of-the-box thinking or things that other things might not deal with. And these are very relevant, right? And, and, and we bog down ourselves a lot by these kind of things, right? How to get rid of guilt and regret about things which went wrong, like things that you should have learned and exam mein aagaya, nahi kiya, or something else, personal relationship or something like that is bugging you all the time and it's affecting your work, right? And at your age, there are all those kind of things, right, which are bugging you a lot, relationships and things like that, okay? How do you not let it screw you up, basically? How to get rid of things that keep on eating you, right? Once you've got experience and you've been through this mill, then you can manage your emotions and all that much better. But I hope that we'll go into a little bit of this also, detecting uh, suicidal tendencies and overcoming this. We all go through this, right? It's quite natural. You think, oh my God, what a pain, right? <laughs> Let us finish it, right? But it's, I mean, these things are absolutely pointless if you see. And once you go beyond it, you see what a uh, pointless thing it is. How will I know if I need help, right? And uh, this is what your, uh, the faculty advisor ought to be doing with you guys. Anger management and building uh, compassion and empathy. So I'll share a few of these slides with them and kind of, uh, who's a faculty advisor, by the way, for the group? Uday Khedkar, okay. How often do you get to meet him? Never. Twice. Okay, I think we need to meet you guys more often because I'm also guilty of that when I was a faculty advisor. I, uh, the, the few meetings that we had made a big, big difference, and I feel that we need to, uh, to engage you on a regular basis, okay? So now what I'm going to do is, this is the part where uh, I'll introduce you to a few of the people. There's Prakash Vaidya you met here. The TAs on the course are uh, Piyush, Ankit, right, at the back. Uh, is Avishek here? Okay, Lohit. Lohit is a lead uh, TA. I think you've all grown to love him, know and love him on the Embedded Systems course. If you've not been there, then I'm sure you kind of uh, know him from the other uh, options that you have. But what we are going to do now, pardon? Yeah. So what we are going to do, uh, we have only till 9.30 now. And uh, I wanted to video every single one of you, right? And what we wanted you to share with us is your name, your roll number, where you come from, the faculty who you'll be working with in your uh, seminar or whatever, and uh, what you've come to IIT for, or what you, uh, and what do you want out of this course. This is most important. What do you want out of this course? This is, if you like, my requirement specification. This, this class and the next class, I just want to video you guys. So I'll have some interaction at the beginning of the class. Then I want each of you to speak for 30 seconds about this name, roll number, where you come from, right? What brings you to uh, your uh, faculty advisor? I mean, in your uh, MTP or seminar, right? Why you came to IIT and what you want from this course? And we are going to respond to that in the sense that I want to take all this input into account when we actually uh, roll out this course, okay? So most important thing is what you want from this course. And try and make it interesting or try and make it a bit more, uh, just say I want to learn communication skills, right? right? Make it a bit more specific and individual, right? You must be, each of you must be having something that you want to crack, right? Something that you want to resolve. 
I want to know what that is. And let's see if we can address those things on this uh, course and make it meaningful to everybody, okay? So we don't want to blindly ape what the HSS department is going to do. We have the option here of really personalizing this programming and making it meaningful for everybody, right? So I'd like to do that. And, and we'll do whatever is required to achieve that, right? So here's a request. Um, shall we go by roll number? 001 first. Who's 001? Okay, fine. So I think the most fair thing is that we go by roll number. Yeah. Um, we are videoing you and you've all been invited to write your name and roll number, right, on a thing. This is not like a convict that you just keep on holding it here and write. This is just to, at the beginning, keep it there so I know whose video clip that is. So when uh, Sachin, he edits the videos and breaks them up into bits. We know who you are. It makes the job easier. You don't have to hold it there all the time. Hold it at the beginning and then you can, right? So we want to know who you are, faculty advisor, where you come from, <laughs> what you came to IIT for. We know that kind of. But what you want out of this course is more important to us. Okay? And then we'll try and give you that. So much of this class, the remaining part, and the next class will be in this mode. There will be a bit of introductory lecture at the, at the beginning of the next class, based on the inputs we've got, and then we'll do this, and then in the next week, we'll go into the actual, uh, the course itself. So, what time do you have to leave? Thirty seconds is all that you have, okay? So don't concentrate on uh, trivial things. Just uh, tell your name, yeah. what you are uh, in IIT for, and what you want to do uh, while you perform this course at IIT. Okay. So we take the first uh, three, maybe, right? And uh, this is your rehearsal for next time on uh, on Thursday morning. Uh, hi, my name is Mandar Joshi. Uh, I was born and brought up in Nagpur. Uh, I've I'm here at IIT to learn more about machine learning and hopefully to publish at a top conference. Uh, in this semester, I'm working with Professor Somain Chakrabarti on a query intent and uh, interpretation. Thank you. Yeah, uh, about this course, uh, since I hope to publish at a top conference, I hope to learn more about uh, writing a good paper and also about oral presentation skills. Hi, my name is Naman Mishra. Uh, I am from Muradabad, UP. I am um, currently working under Professor Prashottam Kulkarni for my seminar. And I came to IIT for uh, getting some more specialization in computer science and also for getting good placements. And uh, my uh, what I want from this course is uh, good uh, presentation skills mainly and how to face a large crowd and present yourself. Myself, Vinit Kumar Gupta. I am from Jaipur, Rajasthan. I come. I came to IIT for uh, machine learning and DIP. I want to learn. I want to learn. Uh, I want to improve my presentation skill and communication skill uh, from this course. I am doing my seminar under Sharad Chandran. Hello, everyone. My name is Vivek, and uh, I am from Hyderabad, Andhra Pradesh, and uh, I am doing my seminar under Sunita, ma'am. I'm. I came here mainly because I was interested in machine learning. And uh, I want to learn better presentation skills re to reach a wide audience from this course. We'll record this over the next few classes, maybe not just the next class, because I mean, just to do this in the entire uh, class would be a bit uh, misplaced. So uh, this gives you a flavor. I can be reached at uh, my uh, computer science department, well, email address. And uh, Lohit will inform you about any uh, changes or adaptations that take place. So now we next meet at uh, 9.30 in this place on Thursday. Slot 4A, 4C that is, okay, fine. Yeah, please retain those uh, sheets that you have, you'll need them next time. Thanks. <laughs>